Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the lecture number 32 of the course title Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so, this is uh, lecture number 2 of the module 11 and overall it is lecture number 32. Uh, so, today we will talk about the concept of uh, self-determination theory and we will try to understand uh, motivation, human motivation from the perspective of self-determination theory. So, uh, before we talk about today's lecture, very briefly I will just uh, give you a uh, recap of the last lecture that is lecture number 31. So, in the lecture number 31, uh, this was the f this is actually the first lecture of module 11 and in module 11 we have started talking about the concept of eudynamic well-being uh, with the idea that you know there are concepts which are related to human well-being uh, which are beyond just emotional experiences or happiness. Uh, which are basically collectively called eudynamic well-being. Uh, they include ideas such as meaning and purpose in life, self-actualization and so on. So, from the last lecture, uh, from the last lecture that is lecture number uh, 31, we started talking about specific concepts of eudynamic well-being. So, in the last lecture, we talked about self concept of self-actualization and we specifically looked uh, the concept, looked at the concept of self-actualization from the humanistic psychological perspective. Uh, and more specifically uh, from uh, two theories of humanistic psychology uh, that is uh, Abraham Maslow's theory as well as Carl Rogers theory. So, Maslow uh, basically talked about uh, or give he is primarily known for giving uh, uh, the model or the theory of human uh, hi hi need hierarchy. So, he say, proposed the idea that human beings have many needs, but all these needs can be arranged in a hierarchical order. Um, uh, in, th in the sense that you know uh, some needs are more fundamental as compared to others. So, they can be arranged in a hierarchy and uh, he said you know uh, most of the human needs can be categorized as basic physiological need at the most fundamental level. Uh, then uh, there is a safety needs, then there is a need for love and belongingness need, then there is a need for esteem needs and at the top is self need for self, self actualization. So, we have discussed all this concept, uh, but uh, specifically the concept of self actualization basically you know is a being need, a need that is that arises from within us uh, and uh, it is met when uh, an individual engages uh, in his self development, self growth, self actualization, actualization of all the hidden potentials. Whenever we engage in all these activities, we are basically working towards uh, the need for self actualization. Uh, Rogers also talked about the concept of self actualization, but in a little bit different way. He, he conceptualized self actualization as a more fundamental, you know, more as a kind of meta need uh, which expresses itself through all the other needs. So, it, it, it according to him, it is a built in motivation, you know, uh, that you know, uh, uh, that is present in every life form. Uh, so, it is not just about human beings, even plants and animals are trying to make best use of their life or existence and that tendency is called self actualization need. So, he said even all the other needs such as you know need for uh, you know, physiological needs, safety needs, esteem needs etcetera are basically people engage in those kind of need fulfillment primarily to make best use of their existence. So, therefore, fundamentally these are expressions of self actualization need and Rogers primarily talked about if people are you know in tune with their self actualization need they will achieve their real self whoever they are at the core they will achieve that real self and they will be at peace with themselves. Uh, but in the process of self actualization human beings have created societies and culture 
uh, which then became uh, you know developed its li life on its own and uh, they have their own conditions uh, you know, rules and regulations and so many expectation from the outside world and this conditions of worth that you will become a worthy person so you will get love and affection only when you fulfill certain criterias they uh, create some uh, sometimes obstacles and people get astray uh, uh, from their self actualization tendencies and uh, primarily people end up becoming an ideal self self which is projected from outside so roger said that uh, the the, the higher the difference between real self and the ideal self higher will be your neurosis or emotional instability or emotional problems so these are some of the ideas that we have talked about in the last lecture uh, specifically in order to understand the concept of self actualization and uh, we discussed it in detail from these two theoretical perspectives today we'll talk about another concept that is uh, connected to eudynamic well being is uh, basically the concept of human motivation uh, from the perspective of self determination theory uh, so uh, today we'll talk about uh, self determination theory and its various ideas so let's see what are the uh, important concepts in it so self determination theory is a theory of motivation so let us first try to understand what is motivation so when we say motivation basically it refers to any force that energizes and directs behavior so motivation is like a force within us it gives us energy and direction to go somewhere no so if you are highly motivated means you are highly energetic and you have a direction and you are going towards that direction or whatever goal that you have so motivation has uh, two components one is um, energy and another is direction so energy gives behavior its strength intensity and persistence direction gives behavior its purpose and goal directedness so motivation has these two important components that is you know intensity as well as direction so there has to be a goal and there is an intensity to reach towards that goal so to be motivated means to be moved to do something a person who feels no impetus or inspiration to act is thus characterized as unmotivated so if there is no inspiration or any force to move in a certain direction in any direction then you are there is no motivation so this is this can be called as a motivation or an or person is highly unmotivated whereas someone who is energized or activated towards an end is considered motivated so whenever somebody has some energetic activation and moving towards a direction or goal then the person will have high motivation depending on the intensity so motivation may arise from many sources sometimes it arises from our needs so if there is a need then to fulfill those need we are motivated to do something sometimes it arises from our thought processes or cognitions uh, that we think that something should be done and then we are motivated to do those th acts sometimes it may arise from our emotional experiences emotions also sometimes motivate us you know uh, to do lot of things sometimes it comes from the environmental events so motivation can come from various sources uh, depending on the situation and specific tasks uh, in the present context when we talk about self determination theory we are this is a basic uh, theory uh, this is a theory of motivation uh, and uh, motivation is primarily conceptualized here based on need fulfillment so it is a need based theory of motivation so motivation come from various sources one of the sources is human need and this theory called self determination theory is a need based theory of motivation so self determination theory is a very broad theory we will not be able to talk every aspect of it but we will be primarily focusing on its fundamental concepts so self determination theory is a primarily it's a motivational theory uh, it which says that people have basic psychological needs need for autonomy relatedness and competence so one of the idea of self determination theory is that you know it talks about that all human beings have basic psychological needs and there are three important basic psychological needs these are need for autonomy need for relatedness and need for competence so we'll see what are these so this is one of the important idea and based on these needs they talk about human well being and motivation so fulfillment of the psychological need is essential for people's psychological health and growth 
autonomous motivation, optimal functioning and self actualization. And fulfillment of these basic psychological needs are very essential for our well being for motivation and uh, optimal functioning. So, let us see uh, the details of this theory. So, the one of the basic idea is that you know human beings have basic psychological needs as we have physical needs like need for food and water these are physical needs. Similarly, human beings have basic psychological needs. When we say basic psychological needs that means, we are considering their kind of universal needs uh, which everybody uh, you know kinds of desires to fulfill them and these are essential for our well being. So, in that sense they are called as basic psychological needs. So, according to SDT there are three basic psychological needs which are universally present among all human beings. One is called as need for autonomy. Autonomy basically means what? It is the need to feel ex free from external constraints on behavior. So, whenever you feel uh, autonomy basically means whenever you feel you are doing some activity out of your own choice and volition and not because of some external pressure. So, we all have a basic need to feel freedom in a sense that uh, we need we have a tendency or we have a basic need to choose and do things that we like not whenever something is imposed on us nobody likes it. So, that is the basic need of need for autonomy to feel autonomous to feel self determined to feel that I have a volition to choose something. So, that is the need for autonomy and it is present among all human beings. We try to increase this sense of autonomy in our life. Then comes the need for competence. Competence is about need to feel capable or skilled. This is also another uh, important need that all human beings wants to feel competent or they want to feel skilled in whatever things that they are doing. Nobody can be competent in everything, but whatever things that we are doing in our life, we all want to feel competent that we are capable of doing it. This sense of capableness or sense of skilled and ability. Uh, is also another need that we, we all want to experience this need for competence. Uh, then comes uh, the need for relatedness. Uh, relatedness is, an, is another need which is also is the need to feel connected or involved with others. So, we have already discussed a lot about human connection and social support. So, this is also a very fundamental need because we are social animals and we have a basic need to feel connected with other people to get good relationship and support from other people. So, that is also a very need. So, the very important need. So, this need for autonomy, need for competence and need for relatedness are three basic psychological needs uh, that is according to this theory is an universal need. Uh, universal needs uh, which uh, we all try to fulfill and these are very important ingredient for our well being. If they are present or we are able to fulfill them to a large extent. Uh, it is very important for our enhancement of our well being. So, autonomy satisfaction is experienced when an individual feels a sense of choice. So, let us little bit explore little bit more about these needs. So, a person will feel that his need for autonomy is fulfilled whenever he has a sense of choice and volition when carrying out an activity. Whenever he feels that I have a choice or there is that, that, that I can choose something or while carrying out any activity I have a choice and volition that you know I can determine things around it. Then your sense of autonomy or need for autonomy is highly fulfilled. In contrast, Autonomy frustration occurs when individual feels controlled through internal or external pressures. Autonomy this need is highly curtailed whenever you feel you are fully controlled from outside you know everything is determined by some outside forces or some outside people. Everybody all, all the time people are saying do this do that. So, you are you do not have any choice and volition. So, in such situation your need for autonomy is highly curtailed need for competence you feel highly uh, or to large extent that your need for competence is fulfilled 
or competence satisfaction occurs when individual feels effective and capable of achieving desired outcomes. Whenever you feel that you are effective, you are competent, you are capable of doing something, whatever task that you are doing, then this need is fulfilled. This need is frustrated when the individual feels a sense of failure and has doubt in one's ability. Whenever you feel I am not capable of doing something or, uh, or you fail in certain task, generally this need for competence is curtailed or it is frustrated. The need for relatedness is satisfied when an individual feels a sense of connection or connectedness with others. Uh, when relatedness is frustrated, individual feels a sense of isolation and loneliness. So, whenever in a particular any context in your life, if you feel connected with other people, there is a good relationship, there is a supportive relationship, then this need is fulfilled. If you feel isolated, alone, uh, nobody is kind of connected to you or taking care of you, uh, then this need is uh, frustrated. So, these three important needs are very important and uh, these are basic psychological needs that every human being tries to fulfill them in their, you know, in their life. This uh, need for autonomy, competence and relatedness uh, are universal psychological needs of human beings and when satisfied will conduce towards well-being and when frustrated will lead to ill being. So, this is uh, one of the fundamental idea of self determination theory. They are conducive for promoting well being, this need basic psychological need fulfillment. So, these basic psychological needs can be described as the psychological nutrients or nutrients that facilitate psychological growth, integrity and well being. So, these are like nutrition as we take nutrition for our body for health of our body similarly if this basic psychological needs are fulfilled, uh, they will promote our mental health. So, these needs are also about personal growth and development, not about just deficits that a person tries to reduce or eliminate. People will seek to, en seek to enhance this continually throughout their life, because these needs are uh, connected to growth and development. People generally seek to enhance them throughout their life. Now, this connected to this need basic psychological need is the concept of motivation. As we said motivation can arise from need fulfillment or desire to fulfill certain needs uh, can lead or increase motivation. So, motivation can arise from need fulfillment. So, in this context let us see how, how motivation is conceptualized and how they are connected to our basic psychological needs. So, self determination theory which is also called as SDT theory or generally you know most of this work in this theory was is basically done by uh, you know Desai and Rian and uh, some of their colleagues. Uh, they distinguished uh, between uh, different types of motivation based on different reasons and goals that arises for uh, that give rise to an action. So, primarily they talked about two types of motivation. So, motivation one thing is you we can categorize motivation as high motivation, low motivation depending on the intensity. Sometimes we are highly motivated, sometimes we are not so motivated. So, one way of looking at motivation is the intensity of motivation high or low. Another uh, important dimensions of motivation is that motivations can be of different types. It is not just about motivation, one type of motivation. Human being can experience motivation of different categories. So, SDT or self determination theory talks about two different types of motivation. Uh, one is called as intrinsic motivation and another is called as extrinsic motivation. So, by intrinsic motivation basically means a motivation which comes from within you intrinsic. So, it refers to doing something because it is inherently interesting or enjoyable. Many times we do lot of activities simply we find them enjoyable or interesting or simply you, you find joy in doing those kind of things. So, you do not do it for getting anything out of it, simply the task is interesting or you enjoy doing those tasks. Those kind of activities comes from intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation on the other hand by definition it basically means you know uh, that uh, doing something because it 
it leads to a separable outcome. So, you do something to get reward, you know, to get something out of it. So, you work to get money, this is extrinsic motivation because you are working not because you enjoyed working, you are working because after working you will get paid for this. So, the payment is your reward. So, you are working in those contexts. So, that is an example of extrinsic motivation. So, over the decades uh, research has shown that quality of experiences and performance can be very different when one is behaving in this, uh, for intrinsic or extrinsic reasons. So, quality of your performance can be very different when you are engaged under the influence of intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation we will see. So, generally when we are intrinsically motivated our engagement is very high, our quality of output is very high. Uh, and basically that motivation leads to better uh, outcomes and performances. We will see uh, in more detail there. So, if I just draw here, motivation uh, here in the SDT con is conceptualized as two types. So, motivation can be categorized as intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is basically doing something for its inherent satisfactions or interest rather than for some separate outcomes. So, here one is uh, moved to act for the fun, interest or enjoyment. Here it is doing something because it leads to separate outcomes. Here, persons are moved to act for rewards. incentives, punishments, etcetera. So, these are two different uh, categories of motivation. Intrinsic motivation as I we have already said is doing something because you simply love to do it. Uh, there is no separate reason for doing it. You simply enjoy doing the task, so you are doing it. So, it is completely coming out from your internal desire. So, there is intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation uh, you are doing something to get some external reward or whatever or sometimes under you know fear of punishment you are doing it. Uh, so, the reason is external uh, in the intrinsic motivation the reason is internal. So, this is the basic difference. 
Uh, let us see intrinsic motivation in more detail here. So, intrinsic motivation is defined as doing something for its inherent satisfaction as we have seen. Uh, the intrinsic motivated person is moved to act for fun or challenges entailed rather than because of external broad pressure or rewards. So, that is clear. People are intrinsically motivated for some activities and uh, not for others and not everyone is intrinsically motivated for any particular task. So, this intrinsic motivation is very individual thing. Somebody may be intrinsically motivated for some task and may not be for other task and uh, other may be more intrinsically motivated for other types of tasks. So, it is very individualistic, very subjective kind of thing. Uh, you cannot say that okay, this is a task that everybody will be intrinsically interested, you know. It all depends on his psychological makeup, his beliefs, his interest, his motivation. So many things may influence. So, research generally shows when people do things or activities under intrinsic motivation, you know, there are so many benefits to it in the sense intrinsically motivated people show more engagement. So, you do not need any external pressure to do it. You are simply enjoying doing it. So, your engagement will be much higher. There will be sustained efforts. You will put more effort. Uh, you are more likely to achieve high. Uh, there is going to be positive self-esteem and well-being and so on. So, so intrinsically motive doing something with intrinsic motivation is an ideal thing uh, because uh, you know the person will do automatically without any external pressure and there will be more engagement, more effort, more achievement, etc. Now, what is the connection between rewards and intrinsic motivation? By definition, intrinsic motivation, uh, in the case of intrinsic motivation, we do not any re need any reward. Reward is not needed because the person is doing the task because he is simply interested in the task. So, there is no need for separate reward. So, what is the connection between reward and intrinsic motivation? Is it that you know there is, um, there is no influence of reward in intrinsic motivation? So, Till uh, 1970s, uh, most psychologies, uh, psychologists agreed with B. F. Skinner, who was a very prominent radical behaviorist. Uh, and his core idea is that you know you can increase the probability of behavior by reward, by giving reward. If you give reward, that chances of that behavior increases in future. So reward increases the behavior. Basically, it also motivates people. So that was the idea that reward always increases human behavior and motivation. However, uh, some later research then uh, began to show some other you know, uh, you know, different findings in the sense that traditional reward and incentive may not always work, especially in, ca in the cases of intrinsically motivated task. Uh, their reward may not really increase motivation or in many cases actually reward decreases intrinsic motivation. So, uh, so traditional incentive do not always work and the fact is they never work when the task requires some amount of creative problem solving or especially the task that requires intrinsic motivation and creative problem solving. In those cases reward may not work all the time. The reason is why uh, rewards narrows our focus which is you know, which when a creative solution is wanted is exactly the wrong thing to do. So, many times when you need a creative solution, you need to be open up. Uh, in those cases, sometimes reward narrows your focus and you know that actually becomes a hindrance for creative problem solving and intrinsic motivation. Some other research also shows that you know uh, in some of the first experiment that, that were done in the 1970s on intrinsic motivation. Uh, for example, children were given a period of time during which they could draw. So, children it, it, it was an experiment done on children. They were asked to draw whatever some of the task that was given. Uh, some of them were given a certificate as a reward for having drawn. So, some of one group of children were given certificate after the task. Other group was not given any certificate. Uh, and when a subsequent chance to draw when these two group of children were given another chance again in a sub subsequent occasion, uh, maybe after certain period of time, uh, again to draw, students who had been rewarded for drawing, uh, it, the, it was result showed that they spend less time at it than the student who had not been rewarded. 
So, they found when subsequent chance of drawing was given to these two, two group of children, uh, the rewarded group who are given reward earlier, they spend less time as compared to the student who or children who are not at all rewarded. So, mostly at the childhood, this drawing generally is very intrinsically motivated or interesting task. So, when children were given reward for such tasks in one occasion, when subsequently they were given uh, another chance to draw, they spend less time. So, that means their intrinsic motivation decreased as compared to when some uh, other group who are not given any uh, reward. So, they, their intrinsic motivation was maintained. So, they spend more time. What could be the possible reasons for this? Some possible reasons are one is called as over justification theory. It assumes that extrinsic uh, reward decreases intrinsic motivation when a person attribute his or her performance to extrinsic reward. So, one thing that happens whenever you are intrinsically motivated to a task, you are really interested in that task. When you get a very strong reward for this, then you do not connect it to your intrinsic motivation, you connect it to the reward. Then you say I am doing it because I am getting reward. So, your extrinsic motivation is increasing, but your intrinsic motivation is going down simply because you are connecting your work to the motivation or the external reward. So, it is becoming more extrinsic. So, your intrinsic motivation will go down, but your extrinsic motivation will increase because you are connecting it to probably to the external reward. So, this could be one reason. It primarily occurs in case of high intrinsic interest and the reward perceived as more than adequate justification. So, when especially it happens uh, when you are uh, you are getting a reward which is enough or you can justify okay for this task I am getting this especially the high amount of reward. In those cases you automatically link your task to the reward. So, it becomes more extrinsic. So, intrinsic motivation goes down. Another re, uh, reason sometimes people, people also say is that you know a reward which are perceived as providing information about person's competence in an activity will increase his or her motivation. So, reward sometimes may not decrease intrinsic motivation when person perceive that the reward that I am getting it is an indication of my competence, then his intrinsic motivation will not go down. But if reward is perceived as an attempt to control a person behavior it will decrease his or his intrinsic motivation to perform an activity. So, if a person perceive that this reward is given to control my behavior, then the intrinsic motivation goes down. So, you know in whatever situation, if the person perceive that okay, this reward is given to me to control my behavior, intrinsic motivation will go down. But if he perceive that this reward is given to me as an indication that I am competent in doing something, then reward may not decrease intrinsic motivation. So, these are uh, different possible uh, possible explanations that are given, uh, but one thing is clear some research indicate that you know when person is highly intrinsically motivated in a task, uh, reward may not work or may not increase the motivation in those context. For extrinsic motivation this is fine, but for intrinsic motivation it may not really work in all times, uh, particularly when people are doing creative tasks or intrinsically motivated tasks. So, what is the connection between basic needs which we have discussed in the beginning and intrinsic motivation? Self SDT theory proposes that intrinsically motivated activities are said to be one that provided satisfaction of innate psychological needs, namely the need for competence, autonomy and relatedness. So, this theory uh, proposes the idea that you know intrinsic motivation uh, basically the person becomes intrinsically motivated in certain tasks or situations which provides or which fulfills those basic psychological needs. What is the meaning of this is that you know for example, if in a context of a task you feel competent. So, competence is a basic psychological need for competence. So, if while doing a task if you feel competent it will enhance your motivation intrinsic motivation you like to do something which you feel competent any task if you just you know try uh, try to kind of experiment it in, in your li own life also you feel much more interest in doing tasks where you feel competent as compared to a task which where you don't feel competent so if a task 
if you are doing a task which gives you a sense of competence, it will increase intrinsic motivation or in the context of that task, if you feel autonomous that you have you you have the chance to choose the task or there is a volition that you can determine what to do, how to go about it, there is a choice in it, it will increase your intrinsic motivation and if in the context of that task, if there is a high relatedness also that the people around around the task while doing the task maybe it is a group task or whatever it is if there is a good relationship and connection with those people especially let's say in the job context uh, mostly we do things in a team situation uh, if people are supportive they understand your problem and help you wh when you fail in a task so in if those supportive environment is there then also you will be highly intrinsically motivated to do, do those tasks because there is a support system or there is a connection with people so, if these three basic psychological needs are fulfilled while doing a task or in the context of those tasks and job, then you are more likely to get intrinsically motivated to do those tasks. Even if you are getting extrinsic reward, whatever it is fine, but it will enhance your intrinsic motivation because those basic psychological needs are fulfilled and you will feel more happier, more you know, sense of well-being will come out of it. So, you will get more intrinsically engaged with those tasks. So, this is how it is connected to basic need fulfillment. So, we will discuss little bit more about this need fulfillment in the last slide. So, is intrinsic motivation rare? Yes, intrinsic motivation is very rare. Uh, we do very few things which are which are basically intrinsically motivated, you know, very few things. Some hobbies, some things that we do are uh, very few uh, activities which can be counted on fingers you know those activities are actually you know uh, we can call them purely intrinsically motivated otherwise most of the activities that we do are somehow extrinsically motivated and there is nothing wrong about it i mean uh, this is how things work so pure uh, self determination or intrinsic motivation may may be an ideal behavior that may be ideal thing that we look for human to motivate human being uh, to enhance their productivity and efficiency, but in reality such motivations are very rare. People go to job, people study, for everything mostly people are doing those activities for external reasons. So, most of the human behavior uh, is extrinsically motivated. Therefore, it is important to understand extrinsic motivation in a much more better way. Because you know, if most of the things are motivated by extrinsic motivation, we need to understand this motivation in a much more better way so that we can utilize this motivation or promote this motivation also in order to get better outcomes. So, let us see extrinsic motivation. So, although intrinsic motivation is a very uh, significant type of motivation, uh, most of the activities as we have already said that people are not strictly intrinsically motivated. This is specially uh, the case after early childhood as the freedom to be intrinsically motivated becomes increasingly curtailed by social demands and the roles that require individuals to assume responsibility for non-intrinsically interesting tasks. Slowly, slowly because during the childhood children mostly do things out of intrinsic motivation. They are interested in whatever they are interested in they will do those things because there is not extern there is no external pressure much. So, for a child everything seems to be you know so intriguing so they will try to explore their environment they will do and uh, as a parents they will also facilitate those behaviors so mostly from childhood we start with most of the activities with intrinsic motivation as slowly slowly a child grows social demands increases then uh, the everything is kind of determined that you should do this you should not do that and there are so many rules and regulation and all these uh, demands and roles that we need to do so many things according to our role and do many tasks which are not intrinsically interesting to me, but I have to do it simply because it is the role I have to fulfill my demands on the role the demands of my role. So, slowly slowly uh, most of the activities becoming extrinsically motivated. For example, research also shows that in schools for example, every uh, it appears that intrinsic motivation becomes weaker with each advancing grade. 
intrinsic motivation decreases with each advancing grades in the schools also. Uh, so, this, this indicates as we grow because of social circumstances, demands and rules and regulations and the roles that we have to perform, uh, we, we mostly are governed by then extrinsic motivation. So, extrinsic motivation is a construct that pertains basically as we have said for separable outcomes. We do because we are expecting some outcomes out of it, some reward, incentive, whatever it is. So, SDT proposed that extrinsic motivation can vary greatly in the degree who to which it is autonomous. Now, this theory interestingly tells that extrinsic motivation is not just one thing. So, there are many categories to extrinsic motivation also and this category varies in their extrinsicness. So, let us see what are the uh, different categories of extrinsic motivation. So, extrinsic motivation may have many sub categories, one is called as external regulation. So, this is basically as per SDT theory. External regulation basically means here a person acts by outside pressure and incentives so extrinsic uh, one of the type of extrinsic motivation is external regulation so, this is typical extrinsic motivation, it is fully extrinsic in the sense the person will do and act only when you give him pressure or give him a very good reward, only out of complete external reward and punishment or pressure the person will act. So, there is no sense of intrinsic interest, the person will completely guided by external reward and pressure. For example, you know let us say a student does his homework only when he is there is a high pressure to do it from the parents from the schools or you know there is a good incentive if he or she does that work he will get some good reward out of it in terms of something that parents will give or you know some some sense so those are the examples of external regulations so this is typically extrinsic motivation there is no sense of internalization of the task that the person is doing so it is completely external Next type could be called as introjection. In introjection, mostly the person acts because of ego involvement such as shame, guilt, pride, etcetera. So, in the introjection the person is it is little bit internalized. Now, it is not completely external person is doing because of completely external pressure or incentive. Here it is little bit internalized, the person is now doing the act because he feels if he is not doing the task, uh, there will be an ego involvement that means the person will uh, feel shame or guilt if he is not, he or she is not doing the task or by doing the task the person will feel proud about it. So, there is an ego involvement in the task. For example, a a, a, a student in the school uh, does his work because he feels if he is not doing the work there will be a shame and guilt 
because teacher will kind of you know scold him in front of class or something so he will be ashamed of it or if he does the work he will feel proud about it that i i could do it so well so the person is doing it not completely because of external reasons but there is a sense of little bit of internalization has happened so it is little bit more internalized uh, so there is a sense of ego involvement in it so this is uh, somewhat you know uh, so little bit of kind of you know somewhat external it is external but little bit of internalization has happened next comes identification identification here what happens here a person there is a sense of conscious valuing of activity there is a self self endorsement of goals so in identification uh, now it is still external goal ext extrinsic motivation the person but the person has internalized it little bit more because here the person is valuing that doing this activity because he values that activity you know still it is external he is not doing it because he loves doing it but he is doing it because he sees the value value of doing it so there is a self endorsement to it so a student studies because he thinks it is valuable things to do it will help him to make a career out of it in future so he sees the values of value of doing it doing that particular action or studying or reading or whatever it is although he is not intrinsically interested in studying uh, but still he is motivated to study because he sees values of values of doing it in terms of promoting his career and life so that is an example of identification so in identification it has become much more internalized still it is extrinsic motivation but it is it has become much more internalized the last category is called as integration in integration uh, here what happens one integrates actions to self concept and personal value so this is almost internal identification is uh, somewhat internal so in integration what happens here uh, it is little bit more internalized even more than identification what happens the person does an action because this action or whatever the task that the person is doing it almost he integrates it to his self concept or his personal value system it is almost become one with his identity so he is doing it still he is not maybe 100% intrinsically interested to it but he is doing it because now this is an important part of his self concept or his personal value system for example a student is reading or studying or getting education uh, primarily because he thinks getting educated is 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 basically is a part of his self concept or to become an educated person is is a part of his idea of self concept so i don't want to remain as an uneducated person i want to become an educated person so i am doing education primarily because it is 
part of what I want to see myself. This is part of my value system. This is part of my self concept or identity that I want to become an educated person. So, this is an example of integration. So, it is almost like an intrinsic motivation, uh, but it still may be a little bit of sense of external aspect is there. It may not completely come out of his intrinsic interest. So, if you see from left to right, if you are moving, internalization is increasing. It is becoming more and more and more internal and uh, at the stage of integration, it is almost like intrinsic motivation. So, the next stage is intrinsic motivation. So, if you see the taxonomy of human motivation, at the one extreme, we can say a motivation where there is no motivation at all, then goes extrinsic motivation. The person is motivated, but under external influences. In extrinsic motivation, obviously, you know, it can be, you know, it can go like this also. So, external regulation, then introjection, then identification, identification, then integration. Like that, it is going towards intrinsic motivation and at the end is intrinsic motivation. So, from left to right, the internalization is increasing and it is becoming completely intrinsic motivation at the right part. So, this is kind of a taxonomy of human motivation, we can show it like that. So, this is how it is shown in a tabular form, this is what we have discussed now. So, I will not go, it, go to it again. So, this last two part identification and integrated integration of external motivation or external motivation, this last two parts are more autonomous or an internalized form of extrinsic motivation. So, we have already discussed identification and integration, the last one, last two are very close to intrinsic motivation. They are almost like internalized and the person will do uh, this behavior, even if it is extrinsic motivation, they will do it on their own because they see value in doing it and they also kind of, in the case of inter inter integration, they kind of make it a part of their self concept. So, it is almost like in, in intrinsic motivation because the part, you do not have to give pressure for doing those tasks in under these conditions. They will do it on, on their own. So, because these are more autonomous and internalized form of extrinsic motivation and these are very close to intrinsic motivation. So, even though extrinsic motivation, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, people generally do because they want to get some separate outcome and consequences, some form of extrinsic motivation can be very close to intrinsic motivation. So, there is a clear significance as we know intrinsic motivation or internalization whenever we do some task which are internalized or close to intrinsic motivation, our engagement, our motivation, our effort, our productivity, efficiency, everything goes up. So, it is always better or therefore, it is there is a clear significance of internalization of extrinsic goal because most of the tasks are done under extrinsic motivation. If you can promote this identification and integration type of extrinsic motivation, uh, then uh, we can increase the motivation of human beings in different contexts. You can increase the quality of output in various contexts. It could be schools, it could be job situations, etcetera. This have a critical applied issues concern how to promote this autonomous regulation of extrinsically motivated tasks. So, they will have lot of applications because people do anyway mostly extrinsically motivated tasks. We cannot do much about intrinsic motivation, but extrinsic motivation we can do something because people are doing things because of extrinsic motivation. So, but if you can promote those identification and integration type of extrinsic motivation in job context in school settings. Uh, we can enhance human motivation to a large extent and enhance their productivity also and efficiency also. So, how to do that? Again, research indicates that basic psychological need fulfillment promotes internalization of extrinsic motivation. As we have already seen, this basic psychological need fulfillment promotes intrinsic motivation. Similarly, um, this fulfillment also promotes internalization of extrinsic motivation. So, we can promote those identification and integration type of extrinsic motivation. If we can provide uh, 
provide fulfillment of these basic psychological needs of competence, autonomy and relatedness in a situation even in the context of extrinsic motivation internalization can be increased and motivation can be increased productivity efficiency can be increased. So, how can we support those needs? Some general suggestion we will not go into too much of it, but some general suggestion for example, the need for related needs can be supported by showing behavior such as expressing affection, devoting time and resources, willingness to help and a non-competitive environment. So, in a particular work context or task context, we can support relatedness if we show behaviors with that person in a particular job situation or a context where you know you show express affection, devote time and resources, uh, you people show willingness to help that person and there is a sense of non-competitive environment. If this kind of environment can be facilitated in a work context, people even though they are doing a job for extrinsic motivation because mostly people do job because they are paid for it. But beyond that also if this relatedness all the support can be given to that person, he will internalize those goals and he will become much more motivated and uh, he will feel that you know this is the work that I need to do it properly and much more efficiently because he is getting you no know, kind of connection and affection and help support from people around it. So, his motivation will increase and it will become more internalized and more close to intrinsic motivation. The need for competence can be supported by providing certain things such as optimal challenges, immediate and non-evaluative feedback and assistance in coping with failure. Competence of a person can be enhanced in a particular situation uh, by giving him optimal challenges so that you know there is a sense of challenge but it should not be like impossible to do. Giving him feedback, non-evaluative feedback, do not say that you are just good for nothing. No, There is a you give evaluated, evaluate uh, non-evaluative kind of feedback, tell him where he is not going in the right direction where he is going and what should be done. So, in a proper you know uh, supportive kind of feedback should be given and help the person in coping with the failure. If he fails, if he or she fails, help him to cope with it and do better next time. So, this will increase his sense of competence. Okay, I am able to do even if I do not do it and once I mean uh, the, the person will not feel dejected by it he will try to improve his performance. So, sense of competence can be enhanced like that. The person will also feel uh, you know, uh, more motivated to learn and enhance his competence also. So, if he feel competent in doing it and supported in case he fails, he will internalize those goals and perform in a much better way, his motivation will be much better. Last, the need for autonomy can be supported by showing behavior such as absence of coercion, too much of giving pressure is absent. In a certain situation, people work under too much of coercion, somebody is all the time guiding you do this, do not do this, too much of pressure and pressure you know from an external person in a work context can reduce those sense of autonomy. So, absence of this kind of coercive behavior will promote autonomy giving opportunities to choose wherever possible, give people to choose on their own wherever possible, it cannot, it may not be possible in every context. Then the person will feel responsible because I choose, I need to perform well. Clarifying the relevance of the task, many times people do not feel interested in a task because they do not see any relevance of the task. So, clarify that what is the importance of doing this task in a context. So, the person will then become more interested because they will understand why I am doing it, what is the relevance of doing it. Enabling expression of negative emotions, many times also people let the people if they are not able to do sometimes negative ex emotions may come up, allow them to do that. So, that also give you a sense of autonomy. Encourage personal initiatives, if pe people are showing certain initiatives on their own. Uh, and uh, showing that I will do it like that, you know, if it is in the right direction, allow them to do that. 
and recognition of person perspective try to understand how that person is looking at things so kind of sense of understanding others perspective all these thing uh, if it can be inculcated in work context or in any task context then sense of autonomy will increase and the person will feel more responsible and he will be more motivated to do it he will internalize the goals of the task to to a larger extent and it will become very close to intrinsic motivation and we know the more we internalize more it goes to closer closer to intrinsic motivation the better it is in terms of performance in terms of engagement in terms of you know uh, sense of well being in terms of you know efficiency etc so these are some of the ideas uh, which can be used to enhance human motivation particularly in the context of even extrinsic motivation it could be internalized and make it more closer to intrinsic motivation so these are some of the ideas about motivation from the perspective of self determination theory so with this uh, i will end today's lecture thank you